We are live and on the air. The Denver Broncos wrap up our second year as head coach, our 11th season overall, and we are going for the third perfect regular season in NFL history. The Dolphins and the Patriots, they've both done it before us. Our Broncos are two wins away, and we are going to play both games here tonight as we take on the River Hogs of Portland and the Dallas Cowboys. Not two very strong matchups stand in our way to be able to go undefeated, but, you know, let's see. Uh, we go for sending out the tweet, 16-0, and 0, exclamation points. As always, good promotion time here. Make sure you're following us on Twitter, TV Sports 27. You'll know when we go live and when we're getting ready to play games. As well as follow us on YouTube, TV Sports 27, also on YouTube. And that's where we upload all the archives. So if you ever miss a game, if you ever miss a stream, not a problem. You can get caught up anytime over at our YouTube page. All the archives go up at YouTube. And finally, on Patreon, if you want to support the channel, support the streams, TV Sports 27 on Patreon. Not only can you show your support but over there we got the archives you can see past videos from our old youtube page we got college football madden 12 we got arena football coming soon blitz the league all pro 2k8 you can also become a mega fan or a super fan and that allows you to request whatever you want to see on the channel so if you want to see more baseball if you want to see more hockey if you want to see more God of War, if you want to see more Tony Hawk, you can request that anytime. You can request that once a month. You can request that once a week, depending on how many subscribers we have at Patreon. Right now, if you uh, become a patron, you'd be one of the once a week subscribers. So you'd get to pick a stream every single week. So whatever you wanted to see, it'd be your choice. So check us out, TV Sports 27 Patreon links on YouTube and on Twitch here. So we're getting into week number 16, 14 and 0, the best start in team history. And we got the former Oakland Raiders, now the Portland River Hogs, taking on our healthy, our strong, our undefeated Denver Broncos. Joe Burrow and the River Hogs at Boar's Head Stadium, right? Sponsored by the meat company or something. We're getting a look at Austin Stogner. He's getting his guys pumped up. And the River Hogs sitting at 6-8 and eight in the division. We have to keep our eye on Pittsburgh. The only other undefeated team, Seattle, finally lost. Oh, I forgot to change. You know what? Now I'm uh, committed, I guess, uh, for the rest of the season. We'll change in the offseason, the uh, kicking. The New York Jets, they lose again a close one, but the poor Jets, they're uh, going to end up with the number one draft pick the way they're going. Janikowski boots it out of the back of the end zone, and we are underway in Portland, Oregon. Week 16, the Broncos and the River Hogs. Joe Burrows, numbers comparable to Tom Brady the third. 3,500 yards passing. Bunch of touchdowns, not too many interceptions. He's taken the River Hogs to a Super Bowl in their first year, so much like in real life with the Bengals. Joe Burrow is a Super Bowl quarterback, and that was a mistake there. They end off to Jamar Jefferson, and he juked backwards into a loss of yards. But look at your River Hogs here. Justin Jefferson, Emmanuel Brown, Jamar Jefferson. A lot of Jefferson's on the team. Second down and nine. Hand out to Jefferson. Well, he thought he was going to get a bunch of yards. And Stingley, Derek Stingley, comes up. Puts him into the turf. So third and six here. Maybe big business if we can hold him to a three and out. There's Dallas, who we're playing next week in our regular season finale. Joe Burrows, tight coverage by Stingley, incomplete. He was looking for Micah Pittman, and Stingley was all over that. So three and out, and they will punt it away to Dante Hall, Paul Buffano. 
Dante Hall gets that just in front of the 10. Hall, oh, Dante Hall. This is going to be one of his better punt returns in his time with the Denver Broncos, getting us up to the 40. And stepping onto the field here, Tom Brady the third. Well, we're going to get a little replay here. Oh, we'll skip past it. You can look at, uh, I guess I won't show you Brady's stats when you skip the replay, but that's all right. Here we go. The Denver Broncos, the final road game of the season. And they're starting it off with a play action fake. Nick Coffey is open. I don't think they were expecting that. Brady goes 35 yards and it's a first down. And Tom Brady the third looking to do what, uh, what dad couldn't do. Complete an undefeated NFL season. Dad got close. But everyone remembers the Super Bowl loss. Torrey Holt, that one falls incomplete. Jarred loose by Dewan Black. <laughs> Dolphins getting blown out. They're trying to get into the postseason. A lot of teams are going to get into the postseason. We looked at the last episode, some of the records. A lot of the teams besides Denver, Pittsburgh, and Seattle have nine wins. There's not a lot of double-digit wins, and Pittsburgh stays undefeated. Wow, so Pittsburgh 13-0 with two ties are also competing for an undefeated NFL season. Can you believe that? We could have two undefeated seasons in one year. Brady slips that one in there. Another good catch by Nick Coffey to make up a lot of that yard. So third down and short, 3,000 yards passing. Tom Brady the third has hit it in his rookie year. And he didn't play through the first two weeks as we still had Justin Fields. The draw to Jonathan Taylor. It is not gonna be enough. But you know what? We're taking our shots. We're going for the undefeated season here. We're gonna go for it. We're gonna see if they're gonna pay off or it's gonna hurt us. I'm a little scared of uh, that guy with the star on the left side coming in. Oh, yeah, that didn't work. Well, there you go. Hopefully that's not a play that comes back to hurt us. We'll see if that three points hurts at all. We kind of wanted to keep the momentum up. But, whoo, we went for it and didn't get it. You don't, normally, Jonathan Taylor's a sure thing on those short yardage situations, but not that time. Robert Highsmith coming in, making the tackle there on Jamar Jefferson. Second and eight for the River Hogs. Jefferson, well, he got tripped up behind his own offensive lineman. Demarius Dubose drives him into the turf, and it's third down and two. So all would be for not here on going four on fourth down other than losing out on three points if we can get a three and out here. And they're going to do my favorite play, the fullback handoff, and it does not work out to great success for Portland. So they will take their second three and out, and Bufano will come to attempt another punt here. And here we go. I'm trying to keep my eye out for the Seahawks score. That's the other team to beat here in the postseason. Oh, man, Dante Hall had some green in front of him. If he could have gotten around... The defender there. What a terrible Monday night football game right there between Jack. I mean, Jacksonville was in the Super Bowl last year, so I guess when they scheduled that, they kind of figured that's going to be a big game, but uh, not quite. Not much on the ground so far for Jonathan Taylor, second and nine. Brady to DJ Moore and DJ Moore gets pushed out of bounds by Al Blades to make it a third down and one do we get to Taylor again there he gets it there we go there's the first down and there goes Jonathan Taylor Blades making the tackle again but Taylor with his best run of the day LA Rams Justin Fields are trying to make their postseason run 
These teams that have eight wins, they're still in the hunt. As crazy as that seems, there's a lot of eight-win teams that are going to be in the hunt. Nick Coffey has been all over the place today. Seven-yard pickup for Coffey. And the Broncos right back into field goal range here. Brady gives it to Jonathan Taylor who gets clipped, but he still falls forward and gets the first down there. Last week, 96 yards. He's very close to 1,000. You see the 14 touchdowns, which is impressive. But we continue to hammer home the point. That's 14 touchdowns where he missed. How many games did he miss? About seven or eight games with injury. So that's 14 touchdowns in half a season. Imagine if he had played the full season. He might be a 2,000-yard rusher. I mean, he could have broken all the records. Just him staying healthy. That's going to be the biggest caveat going forward here as we have re-signed him to what could be his last big NFL contract as running back careers tend to go. And Brady's going to get sacked. Cade Stover. Big 10 on Big 10 there. The Ohio State Buckeye bringing down the Michigan Wolverine. And the blocking was not good by Javier Patton. Number 71. We'll get a look at it again. As, well, you couldn't really tell there from that angle, but he just let his man go. So third and 19. I don't know. Denver's in field goal range here for Janikowski. He almost just Go, uh, go short here. Brady's going to go deep, though. And no, Nick Coffey can't hang on to it. Dewan Black. So let's see for Janikowski. That's 57, man. I almost just want to punt it away. I don't think there's any way he makes that. Gatewood. Pops that one up. Oh, man. One yard less, and that would have bounced and come back in, and we could have put him inside the five. So, all right. Well, two drives. Portland's held us out of the end zones. Makes you a little nervous. Nothing but trap games the rest of the way. Till we get to either that Steelers game or the potential Super Bowl with the Seahawks that a lot of people are looking at. But who knows? I mean, Denver... Or Pittsburgh, you got two really good teams in the AFC. Pittsburgh, they have two ties, but they are also undefeated, and they have been to the big game before. Oh, man. His back was to the ball. Kashawn Clemens not looking at anything. And Justin Jefferson, a former teammate in college and in real life and in virtual land here in Portland, but Clemens not even looking for the ball. But yeah, Denver, led by Dylan McCaffrey. They've won, uh, they've been to a number of Super Bowls with McCaffrey. So it would not be Nick McCaffrey's first time. That was a team we could have coached as well after we got let go from San Francisco. We got offered a job by Pittsburgh. It was Pittsburgh, Detroit. Pittsburgh, Detroit, Miami, Washington, Tennessee. Ultimately, we picked Miami. Pittsburgh, one of the reasons I didn't go with them is I knew Roethlisberger only had about two or three years left, and I didn't want to have to go through a transition of we got the uh, aging veteran on his way out. How long is he going to stick around? And then trying to find the new guy versus the Dolphins, where they had the number one pick. They had uh, Tua Tonga Vailoa. It was just more attractive to that. But you look at what Pittsburgh's done last number of years it's been great and now Joe Burrow boy uh, not going for that field goal early on now starting to make me nervous because how often do you see that that you know you get the the big team they take the risk and then they miss it and then all of a sudden they're on the ropes for the rest of the game fourth and one though will Portland decide to go for it they will not they'll go ahead and take the field goal attempt. Richard Ellis, another Ohio State man, is going to come on. And Ellis puts his field goal through. So rather than a tie game, the River Hogs take a 3-0 lead here on our Denver Broncos. 
See what kind of return Dante Hall gets for us. Decent blocking there. Dante Hall, here he goes. And there, oh, oh, man, he just gets pushed out of bounds by Devontae Cook. That was nearly Dante Hall's first kick return touchdown in the NFL. Man, so close, but that puts us up with the 23. So that was a fantastic return. He's got over a thousand kick return yards at least, even though he hasn't gotten a touchdown. It has not been a disappointing season for Dante Hall. Second and five for the Broncos. Play action, Brady looking, and boy, we were trying to throw it away, and he gets sacked. Chase Young, another Ohio State guy. This team loaded with Buckeyes. And you can see us trying to get rid of the ball, and you know, my favorite animation where it's not, it would be an incomplete pass in real life if the arm was going forward and he get hit like that. There's no quarterback that can palm a football like that going forward and hang on to it, but, you know. I would probably have, like, 30 less sacks if that stupid animation wasn't in the game, but I digress. Brady, what a catch by Mike Evans. Not going to be enough for the first down, but we'll at least take the points here. A little worried about how slow our offense is moving today. I mean, could have 21 points on the board. Instead, we got three. Janikowski on for the kick. And it's a touchback. Dr. Sizzle, we got a first time chatter. Everyone, Dr. Sizzle419, welcome my friend. Glad to have you aboard. What brings you by? Here we, go, here we, go. we got a new, uh, this is, a, and he just gave us a follow too. So Dr. Sizzle, the 72nd follower here since TV Sports moved to Twitch. Oh man, there goes Jamar Jefferson. He about broke that one. Let's see here. Just love Madden. We're glad to have you. We got a lot of good longtime fans that come in all the time. You might see them pop in from time to time. But uh, if you love Madden, you're in for, we're going to be on for about two hours. So we'd love for you to stick with us. And we are going for an undefeated season. We're in our 11th year as a coach. Second year overall with the Broncos. And there's going to be another first down for the River Hogs, Austin Stogner. And... Uh, the Broncos and the Pittsburgh Steelers are both undefeated. We are in week 16, so we could end the season with two undefeated teams in one year. But right now, Portland's giving us a fight. They're giving us about all we can handle right now. Second down and three. Jefferson, big opening for Jamar Jefferson, but it quickly got cut off there by Jordan Battle. So third and three, can our defense stand up? I am on PlayStation, Dr. Sizzle. I'm on a PS4 because I can't buy a PS5 in the US. They don't exist. The PS5s are almost impossible. I don't know if you've had any luck, my friend, getting one or if you're even in the market to want to get one. But boy, oh boy, I'm on like all these Twitter pages and Facebook where the PS5 will go live. And the moment you go on the page and try to click on them, they're sold out. They're gone. So, uh, um, a lot of folks follow me. I don't have online, so, uh, oh, look at that quarterback sack. There you go. Chauncey Rivers bringing down Joe Burrow. Um, you can give me a follow, but I never, I don't have online. I, I only pay for online for Nintendo Switch because it's cheaper. But, uh, you can give me a follow on, uh, my account on PlayStation. And we usually send invites out when we go live so the folks know. But um, as far as friend requests, I don't use any of the online features. So it wouldn't, it almost wouldn't do you any good. Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't do anything with it. Like, we would be friends and then it wouldn't, you know, mean anything. Because I never use the, any uh, online stuff for PlayStation. Because it's a monthly fee 
versus Nintendo Switch, where it's a yearly fee, and it's a lot cheaper. Uh, Joe Burrow, wide open! Man, that was a bad third down to give up that first down. Micah Pittman in Portland, where they've held us down. It's uh, nearly halftime. We got a 3-3 deadlock here. Oh, man, is this going to be the undefeated season? Jamar Jefferson getting taken down there by Leon O'Neal, who had a number of interceptions in our game against the Chiefs last week. Joe Burrow, he blushed with uh, seeing how many interceptions that his AFC West counterpart. Look at that. Burrow tried to keep it himself, and he goes down. He was, uh, he was blushing seeing how many interceptions Patrick Mahomes threw last week. Portland, uh, they are formerly of the Oakland Raiders. The Oakland Raiders, they're the only team in my 11 years to relocate, and uh, formerly the Oakland Raiders. They moved to Portland about three or four seasons ago, and in fact, the first year. On third down here, Burroughs dumps it off to Jefferson, and Portland is going to have to settle for a field goal. The first year they moved to Portland, they went to the Super Bowl, and I want to say they lost. I have to look up my uh, stat book to remember what they did. And then they went to the AFC Championship the next season. Last season, they didn't do much. This season, they're not doing much. But they had great success since they've gone to Portland. And uh, Joe Burrow, I mean, he went right there to him and led him to a Super Bowl. Let me check my stat book real quick. I write all this stuff down. And uh, I haven't posted this one on Patreon, but we post a lot of the stat books for the folks on Patreon. So I'm going to look at my history here. And I'm going to do a... Uh, find, and I'll type in port. I guess I'll just type in Super Bowl. Here, we'll look up real quick for you. Um, actually, uh, Steelers defeat Giants in the Super Bowl. That's the other undefeated team that with Dylan McCaffrey. 49ers defeat Steelers. Here it was. It was actually the River Hogs won Super Bowl 61. The first year they moved to Portland, they beat the Giants 24-21. And the next year they went to the AFC Championship game, but felt just short there. And then last year didn't make the playoffs. This year most likely not going to make the playoffs either. So a little under four minutes to play here. Denver trailing undefeated season on the line. Tom Brady the third in the final road game here for the Denver Broncos. Pressure coming, finds Mike Evans. Nearly gets the first down. You should relocate. We can't, re uh, the Denver Broncos, man, that's a historic franchise. There's no way we can relocate. They've, uh, they're ingrained in the culture of Denver and we're 14-0 we're right now. Normally teams that are uh, down on their luck relocate. But Brady looking for anything, and he's going to go and tosses it way too high for Nick Coffey. So third and three. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I don't think relocation's in the uh, in the cards right now for as good as we've been. No, I don't think the Broncos are one of those teams that would never relocate, I don't think. Brady slips it in there to Torrey Holt. First down. Three minutes to go here. And you can see... Uh, Dr. Sizzle, we're playing with draft classes, not only of future NFL stars, but we threw a lot of the old draft classes in there for fun. So you see guys like Torrey Holt and stuff. Oh, man. Quarterback sack. Again, that was Stover for the second time. Cage Stover. So we're having a hard time containing him. Second down and long here for the Broncos. About to hit the two-minute warning. Still got all our timeouts. Brady the third. Dropping back, and he's going to get sacked again. What's happening to our offensive line? Chase Young, Cade Stover, the Ohio State guys coming in, and they're sacking Brady left and right. Brady hadn't been sacked that much in quite a while. Third and 26. They always want us to just run it, but we don't give up here. Look at he's got a, he's got his X factor, so we gotta go quick. Maybe Nick Coffey, I don't know, or maybe Evans. Let's see how quick we can go. Look at that, Mike Evans. Oh, just shy of the first down. See, they wanted us to run the ball. They wanted us to play lawyer ball. We ain't doing that. Patrick Sertain got the stop, so it's fourth and two. Oh man. 
We're going to play it safe. Man, what's happening to our offense right now? Gatewood. Pops it up. And it goes out of the back of the end zone. Six to three, man. This is the, the first time in a while that the Broncos have been tested. We've been blowing them out left and right recently. We got to see what the second half brings, but... Defense still playing tough. This, this drive is going to be interesting because that's going to determine what happens in the second half, whether we got to get going if they score, or, you know. Oh, man, almost intercepted. I thought Stingley was going to get it there. Luckily, it falls incomplete. Hey, they might uh, they might go three and out here, which would give us another chance to get some more points on the board. The running game has been slow to come by today in Denver, and that's kind of the reason we've had to go to the passing game a lot more. Completed, Joe. Oh, fumble! There we go. That's a big one. Way inside Portland territory. How about that, Dr. Sizzle? Justin Jefferson fumbles it. Let's see who laid that hit. Who laid the hammer? Who was that? That was 25. That was Kashawn Clemens with the hit. Way off of his coverage, but man. And then Jordan Battle picked it up. So that's big business. Okay, minute 16. Still got all our timeouts. Pressure coming again. Oh, man, and we can't get rid of it. Even though we tried. But the, the stupid throwing animation gets us every time. Man, this offensive line, uh, they're letting us down here today. DJ Moore. Gets the first down. That's a big play. Brady to the end zone. Mike Evans can't hang on to it. Incomplete. Well covered there by Patrick Sertain. Second and 10 Denver in field goal range. Hopefully to tie this one up. Brady just gets rid of it. That was almost intercepted as he was feeling the pressure. Litchfield Adjivan was the one that nearly got that one from Tom Brady the third. Third and ten for the Broncos. 37 seconds to go here. And another sack. Oh my god, what is happening out there? That's Stover again. And once again, it's uh, Patton. So we'll take the field goal here, Janikowski. So we'll look to tie this one up. Man, it's been a rough one for offensive line. Janikowski is good. And we are tied. Wow. What a struggle this first half has been, man. Tom Brady the third has been beat up. The offensive line can't contain a block. Stover and Young are getting roughed up. And Look at that. Not impressive at all. But we'll get the ball to begin the second half. And we'll see. No touchdowns yet from either squad. 14-0 Denver. This could either be the greatest Broncos team in franchise history, or we could drop our final two and end up like the 98 Broncos. Let's go. Let's do this. Going 14-2 after this impressive start. Tom Brady the third back out onto the field, and you can see how many times I've been count. It's 94 and 53 the entire time here. We have not felt this kind of punishment in a long time, and that's probably why our running game hasn't gotten going at all. Look at that perfect game by DJ Barnes. 
at the bottom of the screen. 14 to 14. Jonathan Taylor, man, there's 94 and 53 again. Holy smokes. Nothing happening right now offensively. The Seahawks trying to go to 14 and 1. And Taylor, man, there he is again. Chase Young. This is brutal. These guys came to play today, man. This is really incredible. Our offense being held in check. Brady in the gun. That one was successful. First down to DJ Moore. We just got to keep chipping away. Right? I mean, no choice. Good blocking right there. Jonathan Taylor is going to get about nine yards on that pick up there. That was some really good blocking up front for our guys. Taylor about got chased down from the outside. Luckily, he had the speed. Still third and one, though. Come on. Not going to get the first down. And it's Chase Young again. Oh, my God. Out at the four. What a kick. What a kick. This, uh... Man, this River Hog defense came to play today. Chase Young, Cade Stover. Might be the undefeated season killers, man. How about that, Jefferson? Well, he got upended. DeMarvin Leal was part of that one. Poor uh, Dr. Sizzle coming for the first time. Might see a loss after being 14-0 all year. A safety would be big business right here. They seem to be pretty content to just run the ball, which, I mean, if we stop them again, we get the ball in some great field position. This would be a big business stop right here if we can get it. And nothing going for Joe Burrow, so he just dumps it off to Austin Stogner. And that's a big three and out. Our defense playing well. Both defenses playing well in this one. Dante Hall. Boy, you can do anything on that. Not a lot of room to make his magic happen. We can hopefully, hopefully we'll get points on this drive. You look at where we are on the field. We don't come away with points, but they keep, they got that outside pressure on, man. I want to do a hot route. I want someone to block that guy. And he dropped back into coverage. Man, okay. Well, it still worked out. They keep putting that pressure on the left side. I think that's what's been killing us all day. What happened to the ca Oh, my God. What's happened to the cameraman? I've never seen that. The cameraman just gets knocked around like that. Oh my god. McKinley Jackson. Third and one. Jonathan Taylor having the worst day of his season so far in this Portland team. That's going to be a first down though. Of course he's there, but Cade Stover. 36 yards on 13 carries for Jonathan Taylor. Not a day for him to remember. We're getting down to it, too. Six to six. We've been so comfortable. We've been getting blowouts for so long. And finally, we're, we're, hand, we're getting met a challenge for the first time in a long time. 
I mean, the last six or seven weeks were all blowouts. Broncos to throw it. Nick Coffey, he's had a day. First down, Denver. No touchdowns yet in this one. A lot of people score watching this one. Jonathan Taylor is dropped. Matt Frederick. Taylor can't get out of first gear. We haven't seen anything out of Pierce yet today. Maybe it's time to put Pierce in the game. Well, now he is in. Second and 14. Intercepted. Oh, man. Brady tried to thread the needle. He tried to slip it in there, and it was picked off by Bart McMillan. Oh, man. It's getting down to it, guys. I mean, he tried to put it right in between. Look at that. That was about as tight as you can get. But it got intercepted. Oh, man. Could this be the end of the undefeated season? Another big turnover here would be huge. And now, of course, we're thinking back to not going for that field goal early on. We had been so successful offensively all year. It was like, well, of course we'll go for it. That three points is coming up big now, luckily. As we've been saying, not much happening on the Portland side of things, either moving the ball. Or else this could be a bad situation. First down. And Jamar Jefferson, or Justin Jefferson, rather, he is hurt. So he comes out of the game. So one less weapon for Joe Burrow. 6-6, six to six, undefeated season, 14-0 on the line. Demarius Dubose bringing down the other Jefferson, who he mistook for Justin Jefferson a few moments ago. Jamar Jefferson. They uh, keep pounding it, keep, keep pounding the rock with uh, Jefferson, but he's not making much progress either. Much like Jonathan Taylor. Third and nine. First down, Portland. Theo Weiss. His first catch of the ball game. It's a big one. Portland is moving. Oh, man. Oh, man. There's a big opening. Jamar Jefferson, like, stutter stepped. And he lost it. We are winding down quarter number three. It's been a while since we've been in a tight contest like this. Oh, man. Great job by Wiley. Third and six. This is huge. This is huge. Wide open. And he's back in the game as Justin Jefferson. He goes right back out, though. But he was left wide open. And Portland is in field goal range. So barring a turnover, they're getting the lead here. And that, that field goal that we didn't take earlier is sticking out even more. I hope someone's covering that guy that just went into motion. Tipped up. Oh, man. Oh, man. That was an interception waiting to happen. Whew. Can you feel the pressure? Undefeated season is so hard to come by. Five only happened twice in the NFL. A lot of 15 and 1 teams. We might be the next one. Unless we have a really good fourth quarter. Man, it's coming down to it. End of the quarter. Fourth quarter, 6 to 6. 14 and 0 season is on the line. 
Seattle lost theirs a week ago. Denver is on the ropes. Another first down, Theo Weiss. Oh, man. Oh, man. Touchdown would be really bad. This whole drive's been bad. Joe Burrow, touchdown. The Portland River Hogs take the lead. Boy, this team's been a, a thorn in our paw. Going back to the Dolphin days, they eliminated us in the postseason a couple of years ago. And here, this non-playoff team might be getting ready to knock us away from the ranks of the unbeaten, leaving just the Steelers. First touchdown of the game. It's 13 to six. This defense has dominated us here today. That field goal doesn't even matter now other than the fact that we would have the lead if we were going down for the touchdown here. Oh man. All right, we gotta get it here. We gotta wake up and get it. Nice play, DJ Moore, he's been big today. How many catches for DJ Moore? Only 40 yards rushing. Nick Coffey, he's been big as well. Oh, man. A rare missed tackle by Cade Stover, who's been all over the field today. And Tom Brady the third is feeling it right now. Brady was pressured and throws an interception to Wesley Peck. Second interception of the game for Tom Brady the third. The pressure was coming again. Let's review. Oh man, this could be it guys. I mean, once again, who else? It's Cade Stover. They can't hold a block on him. Brady throws it. Man, he's got to get a little more elevation on that. That's probably a good completion. But it was the pressure again of Stover. As we said, between him and Chase Young. Oh, boy. I'm going quiet and getting nervous, man. It's been a while. Come on, get that fumble. Big third down. I don't think he got it. Come on. Come on. Give us one. We got it. Oh, man. I thought they were going to give a little hometown cooking. We have a shot. Brady's throwing two interceptions. No touchdowns. Let that go, Dante Hall. You have, oh, man. Oh, man. I mean, it's, it's everything that could. It's your classic. Trap game. Everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. Right? I mean, it has been the classic trap game so far. 
for our Broncos. Just like the 98 Broncos. It just came a week later than the 98 Broncos. Incomplete. Patrick Sertan all over Mike Evans. Third and six. First down, DJ Moore. What a game he's had. Five catches, what a big game. I mean, no running game at this point. They've eliminated that. It's pretty much in the rookie's hands. Let's see what Tom Brady the third can do. How about another great play to DJ Moore? Despite the two interceptions, Brady's thrown for 255 here. Tried to get Taylor back in the mix, didn't work. 42 rushes, 42 yards. It's been a miserable day for Jonathan Taylor. I don't know, offensive line, credit their defense, whatever. He ain't done nothing. Knocked away, incomplete. Juan Black, and now it's third down. Third and 12 for Denver. Brady just gets rid of it, and Nick Coffey makes the catch. Can you believe it? I think Brady went down again, but we still got rid of it. Yep, Brady did go down, and who was it? Was it Chase Young? Yeah, 94-53. and 53. It's been a nightmare for Tom Brady the third in this game between those two. Quick pass by Brady, Nick Coffey, and DJ Moore. That's a big face mask. Oh, man, Dewan Black. That's a big face mask. We'll take that all day. Puts us on the 13. Oh, man. Big opening. Well, there was. It quickly got cut off there by Litchfield Adjavon. They're not, they're not even a good defense. Look at that ranking, 29th. Second and seven for the Broncos. That not going for that field goal earlier is looking big now, man. Oh, man, a low throw. Brady was looking for Evans in the back of the end zone. He tossed it low. That was dangerous. Boy, what would have happened if that interception had gone down? That would have been a big old blunder. Third down and seven for Denver. Pressure coming, gets rid of it to Jonathan Taylor. He gets brought down. Denver's gonna take the field goal. No, they want us to go for it. I'm taking the field goal. We've been good on defense. Man, well, let's think about this. I'm taking the field goal. They want us to go for it, but... Oh, come on. Where's field goal? Take the points. Our defense has been good. And we can get the win if we get the stop. Right? I don't know, you guys tell me. But we play in not to lose at that point. If we had the other field goal, it'd be 12. We still got to go down and get a touchdown, but a touchdown wins it for us now. First is where if we go for it, don't get it. I mean, we got to get the touchdown regardless, but this touchdown at least gives us the win. There's still a lot of time. Oh, come on. Where's our defense today? I should say, where's our corners today? Defense has been good. Corners keep giving up those big plays left and right. 
They called him out of bounds, though. We'll take that. Check 26, check 26. Ready, ready. Well, there's Jefferson's best run of the day. Oh, man. Well, now it's starting to look like a stupid decision that we went for the field goal. Of course, the defense picks this drive to fall apart after they've been solid all day. Oh, man, turnover something. Another completed pass. And there you go, two minute warning. We got all our timeouts, we gotta start burning them now. All right, this is big, third down, here we go. Comes down to this. First down, that might kill it. We stop him, we still have a chance. Got him. All right. Field goal, right? They are going to go for the field goal. I thought maybe they would try to put it away. Be big if he missed, right? Or get the block. I think he missed. He missed. Holy smokes. We have a chance. One timeout, we get the ball at the 45. Whoo! Folks, it comes down to this. The undefeated season. A touchdown. It stays alive. Oh, that was a dangerous tip. Man. And again, now you're looking at that field goal we didn't go for earlier. A field goal could have won it. Now we have to get a touchdown because we didn't take that three. It always comes back to hurt you, doesn't it? You take the risk, and it comes back to hurt you. Brady pressured. Incomplete. River Hogs giving us nothing to work with right now. We've got to have it on this drive. Nick Coffey is open, and he makes the catch. That's big. Caught by Tory Holt. A minute to play. First down, Tory Holt. Hang on to it, Tory. Oh man, 30 seconds. And Brady gets sacked. Oh man, Stover. Oh man, again, this is killing us. Our inability to block Stover today has been a nightmare. 30 seconds, we gotta go to the end zone on all these plays. Nearly intercepted, but we don't got any choice. We got no timeouts left. Oh boy. Intercepted. We had no choice. Undefeated season over. Oh, man. They killed us on defense today. Three interception from Tom to third, which he did in that preseason game. But we had no choice. That sack killed us, our inability to, to block any of these guys. And, I mean, nobody is open. Maybe we think about running it here just to get a couple yards. But everybody's covered down the field. Everybody's covered. So we took a shot here. And, uh, you know, we, we bring this up a lot. It's Brendan Smith. It'd be nice if Brendan Smith tries to make a play on it. Instead, it's Sertain that makes a play. Smith just stands there. But if Brady... Uh, we had to go to the end zone regardless. We couldn't take a sack. Had to go to the end zone. 
everyone was covered, so what do you do at that point? <sighs> no undefeated season, guys. 14 and 1. Forty five rushing yards killed us. And so did all those sacks. I guess sacks is in the stat line. Seven sacks on Brady. Four from Stover. Two from Young. I mean, these two were a nightmare for us. On the other side, we had one sack. All right, undefeated season is done. We went 14-0 before suffering our first loss in the classic trap game. And we went for it early on. Maybe if we had that field goal... Early on, we take a field goal late instead of chucking it into the end zone. And that gives us the win. But, you know, can't look at it like that because you look at it, they only put 13 on the board. That should have been enough for us to smoke them, but we had no running game. The offense couldn't do anything. Their corners were everywhere. Their defenders were everywhere. That's what hurt us the most, I think. I mean, the amount of times we did get down the field and stall out, but not having a running game really sucked. Well, there you go. It's down to Pittsburgh now. We went from having three undefeated teams in the NFL, and in two weeks, we're down to one. Uh <sighs> Rest key players. Well, let's see where we are now. Well, now we have to keep playing. There's no uh, there's no resting because now the number one seed in the AFC is up for grabs because all of a sudden, if we lose again and Pittsburgh wins, Pittsburgh gets the number one seed, so we got to keep going. Steelers, your lone remaining undefeated team. All right, let's, uh, let's take care of this game with Dallas to wrap up the regular season, guys. Man, I really wanted that undefeated season. We were so freaking close. So close. But 14 wins is going to be my most in Madden. In this Madden, at least. Because our previous best was 13 with the Dolphins. So, Oh, man. Well, there's a glitch right there. That uh, Dolphins or that Broncos score is not accurate at all. Boy, oh boy. Well, we're not going to arrest anybody because, um, you know, <laughs> we're still playing for the, the number one seed. I'm done with scouting. I've done enough scouting. Oh, man, that's... Whew. Let's try to bounce back. I mean, 15-1 and one, still good. we got to play tough.
All right, we got to bounce back now. Let's have a good one. Hey, get the loss out of our system. No more pressure. No more undefeated season. We join like every other team in the league in history, except maybe the Steelers. Let's bounce back, get the win, go into the playoffs strong. Fans still cheering. This is still a 14-win team. So let's go. Nick Coffey, he played big last week. He showed up. DJ Moore showed up too. No shame in that. All right. We're going to buck up. Hopefully we're at home for the rest of the year. If we win and Pittsburgh loses, we're the number one seed. In fact, I think if Pittsburgh, I don't know how it would go. With two losses or one loss and two ties, would that equal two losses? Let's just focus on getting the win. Get 15 wins. We need a good bounce back after last week. JT Daniel at a USC. He's also good on the year. Although the Cowboys record isn't. Also about 3,500 yards passing. Let's focus on having a bounce back week. We're going to do it right here. We're going to blow them out, get back to our winning ways. First play of the game, JT Daniels finds Eric Gilbert for seven. Let's we'll look at some of the Week 17 scores at the bottom of the screen here. Daniel spikes that one in the turf. He had G. Scott Jr. in his sights. Indianapolis at 9-7. and seven. Most likely going to the postseason with that record. See a, a young Sean Alexander backing up Ezekiel Elliott, who's been on this Cowboys team his whole career. Well, that's going to be a completion. Wide open was Eric Gilbert. On that deep pass from JT Daniels. Man. Our corners really sucked last week. I won't say that. Our our defense was good, but our corners gave up a lot of big passes. And here they're giving up another big pass there. There's Zeke Elliott getting stopped by Vrabel. Four yard loss from him. So Zeke, he's in his 13th year, which is a lot for a running back in the NFL. He's going to be out soon. They got Sean Alexander who's ready to come in and pick up the reins. Another wide open play for the Cowboys. Super Bowl rematch from the early days of the Super Bowl. It was a Super Bowl 11 or 9 or something like that. Super Bowl 12 maybe. Denver and Dallas. And Dallas getting ready to punch this one in. So we only get one touchdown last week, but boy oh boy. Here we are struggling again. Touchdown Cowboys, Nicholas Brackett. This would be quite a fall from grace to go from where we were to struggling into the playoffs. That would be a worst case scenario. Knowing that the road to the Super Bowl is probably going to go through Pittsburgh. I was going to be running into the kicker penalty. The 
It's such a stupid penalty to kick off from the 50. Like, when you run into the kicker, like, what does it matter? Like, <laughs> Well, here comes Tom Brady the third. He really got tested last week. He got forced into passing the ball all day due to the lack of a running game. Through three interceptions. One of them kind of forced it because he had to. He had to go for the end zone. No timeouts. Couldn't throw it short. That would have run out at the time. See if we can get this running game back in check. And Jonathan Taylor starting off on the right foot, going for seven yards there. First down for Taylor. So already a lot better than what he was doing a week ago, right? In Portland, hopefully that Portland game being our last game on the road. There's good blocking and there's Jonathan Taylor. Jalen Ramsey, a couple of FSU guys in the backfield for the Dallas Cowboys. Jamil Pierce, and already our running game. A million times better than where we were a week ago in Portland. And we didn't get to see a whole lot of Pierce. I mean, it was a lot of Jonathan Taylor in hindsight. Probably should have pulled Taylor sooner, but usually the game kind of does that on its own. And maybe that's the key. A lot of folks are going to look at that game plan from Portland and say, if we can stop the rushing attack... Force Tom Brady the third to have to throw it. That's how you get your wins. Plenty of time. And that one's good to Brendan Smith. So we're answering this opening drive. We didn't score a touchdown all last week. We're looking good here on this first drive. So did Dallas, but... Taylor couldn't find an opening to get into the end zone. That tackle was made there. We went, oh man, we went for that. Went for it on fourth down. Didn't take the field goal. We could have maybe won the game. Touchdown, Jonathan Taylor. Put it out of our minds. 15-1 is still good. Although there is the, uh, you know what they say, the curse of the 15-1 team, right? How many 15-1 teams have actually won the Super Bowl? It usually doesn't happen. There's been so many 15-1 teams that end up losing in the postseason. 7-7, seven seven, we are tied. Dallas and Denver. Two drives, two touchdowns for both these teams here. Did he say donuts? Well, there's a whole bunch of yards. Kenya Harris from UAB. The Blazer. JT Daniels and looking good so far in this one. Boy, he can't uh he can't miss. And we got an injury. Dave Zimmer. Coming up short. Zeke goes out of bounds, so third down. They're down in quite a quite a bit here. Come on, set. 18, and that's going to be a stop. There we go. Leon O'Neal makes a stop on Gilbert, who's been big today for Dallas. 
or Gilbert. I left the T out. My notes say Gilbert. Well, I'm going to fix that right away. So that's Gilbert. We got this. Theo Morrison, Florida A&M. On with that punt. So here comes the next possession for our Denver Broncos. Late in quarter number one. The Cowboys defense. Was that Seattle that was losing? LeVar Arrington, part of this Cowboys squad. Sante Samuel, Jalen Ramsey. Hopefully we won't get any big injuries, but... Oh, no, Seattle is winning. But, I mean, this is a, uh, it's a pivotal game because Pittsburgh... They're going for first place. Could you imagine? We go 14 and 2. And don't get the number one seed. That would be ridiculous. Portland could be a playoff team at 8 and 8. Yeah, it's gonna be a three and out for the Broncos. So both second drives for Dallas and Denver. Didn't go so well for either squad. Out at the eight. There we go, Gatewood. Pearson Gatewood, everybody. JT Daniels in shotgun. We got to figure out some answers for him. Nine of 11 so far. About as good as you can be. He had that one pass that he threw into the turf early on that was kind of rough. But besides that... He's playing about as good as you can play right now. Marvin Leal finally some pressure on somebody. And uh, welcome to this stream, Devin Bush, who was quiet. When we needed him in the Portland game. Portland wrapping up their season down there with the New York Jets. And there go, oh man, Ezekiel Elliott had nothing but daylight in front of him. And he turned inside and went down. That was a big blunder by Zeke. That was a touchdown. His name was written all over that touchdown. Elliott gets about four or five on that following carry. 794. Hopefully slowing down a bit. Sean Alexander. Drafted by the Cowboys. Waiting for his turn in Dallas, which could be coming soon. 7-7. Seven, seven. Cowboys and Broncos. Broncos going for the first 15-win season in team history. No longer an undefeated season on the table. Zeke pushes past Chauncey Rivers. Yard shy of the first down, though. They don't give it to him. Detroit and Chicago, so they end with a tie. So they're looking like they will probably both go to the postseason with nine wins. It says something, man, when nine wins is kind of the benchmark to get into the postseason. But these nine win teams are could be scary. I mean, look at we just we just got uh we just got shellacked by Portland. Who might end up with eight wins, so there you go. JT Daniels, man. He's an unstoppable beast. Two incompletions. First down, Dallas. I uh, I hate to say it, this might be one of those kind of games too. Maybe it's more enjoyable for you guys. I don't know what you prefer, blowouts or this and Pittsburgh has done it you see the score and they do it it seems fitting against the Miami Dolphins they have two ties so I don't know you guys will have to tell me whether you put an asterisk next to uh what they accomplished or not but the Pittsburgh Steelers will finish the season undefeated 14-0-2 
a 14 win undefeated regular season with two ties so however you guys want to classify that but the Steelers will join the Dolphins and the Patriots in the Super Bowl era as the only teams to finish the regular season with no losses so there you go the Pittsburgh Steelers um, well that almost kind of settles it too I mean I don't know I still don't know what is a better if does 15 1 and 0 get you the number one seed or does 14 and 0 with two ties get you the number one seed what's more one loss or two ties I feel like we, we got to keep going right Definitely, if we pull the starters, we're not going to get the number one seed in. I think we need as many games at home as possible. It's been a while, man. We've been to two AFC championship games in our 11 seasons. Went to one Super Bowl. Missed a field goal to miss the other. That was against Pittsburgh. Got to finish strong. We're not looking too strong these last two games. Silver and blue, man. Our kryptonite teams, and then to think we possibly got Seattle. And that kind of worries me a little bit, too. I was feeling kind of comfortable. Man, these last two games. And to think we got 14-0... And then depending on what Seattle does, 15-1, we got a lot of strong teams that might stand in our way. So that's the thing. If we don't make this Super Bowl, I mean, it's I would hope it's going to be us losing to a Pittsburgh or a Seattle. Like, it's still some really good teams out there. Dante Hall, there he goes. Finally, the human joystick, his first kick return touchdown in the NFL that's what we drafted him for that's big business unfortunately now our gassed defense goes right back out on the field but that's what we've been waiting for from Dante Hall all season long a kick return touchdown doesn't happen often in Madden he gets it for us that's big Janikowski is good 14-10 Denver. It's so silly that we even have to go through the rigmarole of even kicking off in the NFL, right? Like, it's so stupid. And I see this as a Broncos fan, too. Like, I've seen so many kickoffs because of the altitude. It just goes out of the end zone. It's ridiculous. Just give them the ball at the 25. Call it a day. JT Daniel finding G. Scott Jr. Delta O'Neal, our rookie, making that tackle. A little momentum on our side with that kick return touchdown compliments of Dante Hall. And JT Daniel nearly sacked and then just threw it away. He had Zeke there, but he threw it away, so the sack would have been better. Third down and nine. That's not going to be enough for the first down. Eric Gilbert. Jerry Wiley. So three and out, so our defense was gassed. Had to come right back out. We had to stop. Hey, uh, Kyler Murray and the Bucks. they get that win on Sunday night. They're going to go to the postseason. I would imagine with nine wins. Can Dante Hall do it again? How ridiculous would that be? Not going to happen. He tried. Only got 10 out of that. All right, touchdown here and put Denver in a good way going into the half, absolutely. Jonathan Taylor, how about that good blocking right there? Oh man, Taylor had one man to beat. Julian Barnett from Spartyland made that low tackle, but man, if he had gotten past Barnett, he'd have been gone. Taylor played much better today than he did against Portland. Oh, boy. 
That's another rough hit. That is uh, Barnett again. Said something about we broke Andrew Luck something or other. I didn't see it. It went by so fast. Boy, Brady, there's uh, no one to go to, but Brady with his slow speed is going to take a run. And he gets 10 yards. He's like dad. He didn't run very much. Jamil Pierce is in. Oh, let's get the snap off. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, come on. Acting like we got all the time in the world. Come on. Well, that didn't work out. Lost the yards. Here we go, here we go. Boy, no one is open again. Brady just uh, gets rid of it. So third and 13 here. Maybe Janikowski, I don't know. This would be 50 plus for Janikowski. Brady, that was beautiful. What a catch by Torrey Holt. And he even hangs on to it. Took the hit from Rasheen Bass. That was great. Less than a minute here for the Broncos. Tom Brady the third. I don't think he got both feet down. He did not. DJ Moore out of bounds. Brady. Oh, Nick Coffey can't get the feet down. Man, oh man. That's a touchdown right there. That didn't happen because Coffee couldn't get the feet down. This Cowboy defense is ridiculous. Nobody is open. Brady has to throw it away again. And we'll have to just take the three points by Janikowski. Field goal is good, 17-10. Broncos. We got more folks joining us. Welcome aboard, the guys that just joined us. It's week 17. For those of you that did just join us, unfortunately, the undefeated season has come to an end as we were defeated by Portland last week but we are still going for a 15 and 1 season we have the seattle seahawks who are 14 and 1 and the pittsburgh steelers and you guys will have to let me know whether you consider it an asterisk or not the steelers are going to finish the regular season 14 0 and 2. so they will technically have the third undefeated regular season in the super bowl era in nfl history but with two ties. So do you consider that? Do you put that on the same list as the Patriots and the 72 Dolphins having two ties? Let me know in the chat. I don't know why they bother to call a timeout just to run the ball with Ezekiel Elliott on third and five. So because of that, I call a timeout. Now we're going to get the ball back. 32 seconds, two timeouts. Let's see what we can do here. Theo Morrison boots it away. Dante Hall. Oh, man, I would have liked a little more blocking there. But look at the joystick. And he ended up getting 10 out of that. 10's not a lot, but considering where things could have been. All right, Denver. 22 seconds, two timeouts. They can get a field goal out of this. We'll see. Tom Brady the third. Pressure's coming. Just chucked it up towards Nick Coffey. Dexter Coaxley was back there. Now all of a sudden Madden's telling us to give up, but we ain't giving up. What's the worst that happens? Interception? Oh, come on. We're throwing it deep anyway, so it'd basically be like a punt. Tom Brady the third in the gun. 
Mike Evans. And he hangs on to it. Timeout called by the Broncos. And we're in business. We still got one timeout. See, mad one must have played lawyer ball. We got seven seconds. That was almost picked off. All right, now we got to go for the field goal. My goodness. All right, 53 yards for Janikowski, which he's proven. He's had no problem making these this year. We've had struggles in the past making these big kicks. Janikowski is good. And it is 20 to 10. Us getting the ball to begin quarter number three. We are in big business here. 15 wins would be the most in Broncos history. And we're looking good. Passing yards. Boy, going the way of Dallas. JT Daniels has knocked us around. Dante Hall is going to get us up towards the 35 of the 32. Tom Brady the third stepping back onto the field. Okay. Well, I mean, our running game's been decent. We should keep that up, right? What do you guys think? Keep pounding the rock, Jonathan Taylor. We're blocking up front, Lee Valdez. And TCU. Second and eight for the Broncos. Big business, we get a touchdown here. Play action. Brady. And that one was almost intercepted. Brady uh, misses Mark a little bit. Now he had three interceptions last week. One of those was because we had to force it, but, I mean, here we are. Only completing five passes, so the rookie is starting to look like a rookie all of a sudden. DJ Moore had that, and he had that knocked out of his hands by Jalen Ramsey, so Denver goes three and out. It's not what you want to see. You don't want to see your, your offense start to get lackadaisical here as we're getting close to postseason time. Another good punt by Mr. Pearson Gatewood. And JT Daniel back out onto the field. And he just chucked that one out of bounds. Looking up uh, JT Daniel. He started at USC. He went to Georgia. He hadn't played much in Georgia, though, because. Um, uh, JT Daniel. Got benched at USC. Daniel, oh, incomplete. That's a massive drop by Gilbert, who's had some good catches today. Yeah, Stetson Bennett took the job from JT Daniel, so. The rest, as they say, is history there. like he uh, had a lot of injury issues in Georgia but here in Dallas he's playing well LA Rams playing uh, Seattle tough Justin Fields and Jonathan Taylor meet LeVar Arrington yeah. 
Not been as dominant as we have been. The last number of weeks, both of these games have been about a bit of a struggle, and there's going to be holding. Braden Smith. So that didn't help things. Tom Brady the third. Incomplete. Five of 14. Brady cannot get that sixth completion. It's third and 22. Part of it's just guys not being open. I mean, you look down the field. If you're on YouTube, rewind it back. Who's open? Part of it's... uh. I mean, their corners, Portland and Dallas. Oof, that punt was not as good. Still got a 10 score lead at least, two scores, so we're hanging on to that. Robert Hyde Smith and Jerry Wiley in on the stop. Oh my god. No, it didn't matter anyway. First down. And Gilbert making up for that drop somewhat. The Marvin Leo, we haven't been I mean I'm controlling Leo. Maybe I should control someone else. But I can't even get through with Leal. Man, Devin Bush. He's doing some uh, somersaults there. Taking down Ezekiel Elliott. Elliott met by Stingley. Or no, that's, uh, check that. That's Robert Highsmith. So third and eight here. Nothing for JT Daniels, so he just has to check down. Check down, check down to Elliott. So defense holding strong again. I mean, defense was strong in the last game, too, only 13 points. It was the offense that just put up nine. A bunch of field goals. Come on, Denver. Let's get a touchdown right here. Jacksonville, last year's AFC champion, is going to finish 6-9. and nine. And there goes Jonathan Taylor. Ran out of real estate. Anthony King bumped him out of bounds. But it's 1,000 yards. I don't know if he hit that last week or this week or what. But 1,000 yards on the year for Taylor. He's got even more ahead of him. First down. Dexter Coakley. Oh, Taylor's in the zone. That could be dangerous for Dallas. KC, nine wins. That most likely will put them in the postseason. Jamil Pierce. Chris Jones is tearing away at the football. Here comes Taylor back in. New Orleans and Atlanta fighting to be a rare 10-win team, which would all but assure them a spot in the postseason, whoever wins that game. That's a big one between the Falcons and the Saints. Seattle hanging on against L.A. L.A. trying to get in at 8-8. Eight eight. Ooh, Jonathan Taylor. Again, Barnett stopped him where he was about a missed tackle away from burning a hole in the saddle of Cowboy defense. They leave Pierce open here. Jameel Pierce. He spun right into Rasheen Bass, but there's a completion number six for Tom Brady the third. So finally he hits it in the third here.
Well, that didn't work out. LeVar Arrington, Lee Valdez. Double team tackle. Second and goal back at the 13. Brady just dancing around and he's going to go to Coacher. And he only ended up getting two out of that. Only 101 yards, so. I mean, Brady did throw for over 300 last week, but not been pretty these last two games, for sure. And again, couldn't find anybody open. It's been the story of the day today. A lot better offensive line, but Trevor Price getting the sack. Michigan on Michigan. Maybe they're former teammates, but I mean, you look at it, who's open? Nobody is open, so Brady just has to eat it and take a sack. He's been hit a lot. Marcus Mariota is in relief. If the young rookie were to get knocked out. We've only had one year where we had a uh, starting quarterback get knocked out. When Tua went out, we had to go to Josh Rosen, who did play really well. Look at Portland. Holy smokes. The fact that we lost to that team. We scored nine points on Portland, and they're going to play the one-win Jets. And the Jets have 42 points. That's that's football, right? That's the parody of football. They beat a 14-0 team and held them to nine points. And now they're playing a 14-loss team. And they have 42 points against them. That's just ridiculous. But that's the NFL. That's football. Elliot tripped up. Boy, he about went neck first right into O'Neal. Oh, Elliot, did he get stopped? He had Robert Highsmith breathing down his back. And Elliot is going to get the first down. Been a hard fought yard for Elliot on the ground. Sixty-two yards on the ground for Elliott. And they've really taken the ball out of JT Daniels' hands. It's surprising why they're running it so much with Elliott when Daniels has just been a, a powerhouse. You see? I mean, come on. G. Scott Jr. Here we go, fourth quarter. For the Denver Broncos. Obviously disappointed with how Portland turned out, but man, we could finish 15 and one, which would be the greatest record in Denver Broncos team history. Put us on the map. Hopefully this is a Super Bowl team, man. Wow, there's some defense by Stingley. It's been a while, man. I mean, I've been to Super Bowls. I, I consider this coach going back towards the, the Madden 12 days, if you guys remember my Detroit Lions. Played 14 seasons with the Lions. We went to three Super Bowls, won one. DeMarvin Leal, there he is, getting the sack on JT Daniels. We've been to one Super Bowl with Miami, so... We've been one in three in recent memory, but let's see if we can get back and win another. Put us on the map. Just getting Detroit to three Super Bowls kind of put us on the map. And then we went to this game, went to San Francisco, got let go. Went to Miami, went to a Super Bowl with them, but and here we go. Oof. This would give us, I would assume, would give us the number one seed. We'll have to see what the game considers stronger. One loss or two ties. I would think 15 wins would outweigh zero losses, but we'll see. Oh, 
14 0 and 2 versus potentially 15 and 1. We don't have 15 and 1 yet. We got to keep going, but Tory Holt. And that one was a perfect throw by Brady cuz he threw the ball right before Tory Holt made his break. So there's no way to defend that one if you're on Dallas' side. Jamil Pierce. Does he have the speed? No, they're going to put him out of the one. Are you kidding me? Anthony King with the tackle. I got to see this again. Did he step out? Because it looked like he was in. Oh, his foot. Let's look at the foot. Oh, my God. I don't know. I think that's a touchdown. What do you guys think? I don't know. Normally, it's an automatic challenge, so... Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Who's get Somebody get it. Who's got it? Oh my god. He fumbled. And the ball was right there and Dallas got it. That was the game clincher right there. That was the game clincher. Instead, Dallas has life. Here they go. Trying to make it 14 and two. Golly, these mistakes are making me nervous now. We weren't having these mistakes. Now all of a sudden we are. Boy, we're just getting in our own way right now. Derek Stingley's going to prevent the touchdown to G. Scott Jr. But all of a sudden, I mean, they get a touchdown. It's a six-point game. We were a freaking quarterback sneak away from putting this one away and being 15-1. and one, And now all of a sudden, it's a six-point game. They are who we thought they were. Seven minutes. We got to put another drive together. Because I feel like if Dallas gets it back, they got momentum right now. Right? Oh, boy. We were cruising to victories in these last two weeks. It sucked. Going into the postseason, you don't want to be rocked like this. Oh, Jonathan Taylor. How about that? Taylor lowering the shoulder and knocking Anthony King back. That's going to put Taylor over 100 yards. Taylor's trying to make up for that terrible game he had in Portland. He's got over 100 yards rushing. LeVar Arrington bringing down Taylor again. Four yards for him. Under six to play. Taylor takes it. First down Denver. He's held up well. He's had his injury issues the last two seasons, but the second half of the year, boy, we've, uh, we've run it with him. 20, 25 carries a game, but he has not gotten hurt again. Boy, if... Uh, if we'd had some blocking down the field, Nick Coffey, that might have been a good run for some yards. It's going to force Tom Brady the third into a passing situation here. Mike Evans. Did he make that? They're saying incomplete on the sideline, but it was good. So third and short for the Broncos. This is a 
a must have. Putting the ball in Brady's hands. Pressure coming. Mike Evans was right there and he didn't catch it. Mike Evans was wide open. Holy smokes. I am feeling very uneasy with how this is going. Ugh, touchback. All right, we got to buckle down here. I mean, they get the touchdown, they got the lead. J.T. Daniels. Oh, he loses the football. It's recovered. Man, DeMarvin Leal knocked it loose. Oh, man. Leal's in the zone, too. J.T. Daniel connects with Gilbert. Couple of Georgia guys, right? Since JT Daniel had his time in Georgia. We don't know where he's transferring to next. He'll transfer portal. That's not gonna do it. JT Daniel's playing well, and then all of a sudden he went down, he went he turned into Chuck Down Chuck. I mean those last three passes were just check down, check down, check down. That was uh that was pretty uh conservative for JT Daniel when you got 14 to 1 on the ropes here. And that didn't work out for Dante Hall. Alright, well it's gonna come down to this guys. This drive, couple of first downs, Broncos clinch it. If not, goes back to Dallas. It always makes you nervous. Bass trying to force that fumble. Second and 13. There we go. That's a big time play. There's the connection we've been waiting to see. Tom Brady the third to Tory Hole. Come on, run one more play for the two-minute warning. Let's go. There you go. Nicely done. Oh boy, uh, Mike Evans out there. Come on. Two-minute warning. Denver. A couple of first downs away from 15 and 1, which would be our best record in. Gosh, even going back to the Detroit Lion Day, I don't think I've ever had a 50. Well, I'm, I take that back. My my 15 and 1 record I had with Peyton Manning on the Arizona Cardinals, which will be coming soon to Patreon. So stay tuned to that that old school series. I did go 15 and 1 with that Cardinals team. But talking about this head coach that I started in Madden 12, that I consider part of the same uh, coaching legacy, never went 15 wins with the Lions. Never with the Dolphins, never the 49ers, so it's been about 25 seasons. This will be our first 15-1 year, the first in Denver history. First for this coach. Sky's the limit for this team. A lot of guys on rookie contracts for at least four more years. Then maybe then but we retire, right? We, we did mention we did want to get the new Madden game. Third and four. I'm going to play conservative. I don't care. Run it. Let them run the time down. So how many more seasons do we do with Madden 20? Because there's been so much change with uniforms and team names. I think that's a first down. That might seal it. How about that? 15 win season. Oh, man. It hurts that we were a decision away from 16-0. But that's how it goes sometimes, right? I mean, we were, a, we were a sack away. We were offensive line play away. We were a field goal decision away. 
We were a drive away from 16 and 0. But you know what? So was uh, Seattle. They went 15 and 1. They had a poor loss. So it happened to the best of us. We are going to finish this season 15 and 1, our best season in 25 years as a coach. The greatest season in Denver Broncos history with a rookie quarterback. And as we were saying, we're going to get the new Madden. Uh, I would imagine Madden 23. Because so much has changed in the NFL. Like from this game to Madden 23. The Browns, the Bengals, the, uh, the Rams, the Buccaneers all have new uniforms. The Washington Commanders are a thing. So there's going to be all these new uniforms, all these new teams. It might be time for an upgrade. But how many more seasons can we get out of this coach? You know, do we go until the rookie contracts are up? Call it a career after 15 seasons. I don't know. But there it is. 15 and 1. Not quite the undefeated season, but you got to give us you got to give us the the applause for pulling it off a 15 win year considering where this team was before we got there, you know? We're going back to the postseason. I think Denver's first postseason in 11 seasons. I don't remember this team ever making the playoffs. So there you go. So Khalil Mack, where'd he go in uh, real life? He got traded recently. Uh, the Chargers, that's right. He stayed in uh, AFC West there. Uh, negotiations, I don't, I think we agreed that we weren't gonna, um, Purcell. Eh, that's a lot of money for a guy we're not using. Goodbye. All right, um, let's get some uh, screenshots for the YouTube thumbnails. If you're not following us at YouTube, it would be a good one. This is a little, little inside sneak peek. We got that picture. We got that sack. We got the catch. We got another sack. We got the um, a backside. Let's. Uh, I like this one. Getting the touchdown, so you know we mean business. And then we got to get, unfortunately, the Portland game. That's kind of a good picture. Yeah, I like that one. All right. That's going to be on the thumbnail, so stay tuned to YouTube. And here we go. 15-1. and one. So we'll advance to the wild card week. We'll, I guess, sim through the wild card week and see who our first opponent is. So, you know. So we got an upgrade situation here. Oh, Tom Brady's getting upgrade. Janikowski. I like it. All right. So let's see how everything turned out. Let's uh, look at the standings and see who made the playoffs. So in the AFC, we are, uh, well, it's we had the same uh, percentage here as the Steelers. Our one loss equals two ties. But they... Uh, Points for, points against. I don't know how we won the tiebreaker, but they gave us the number one seed, so there you go. So we are number one, and the Steelers would have to go on the road, which, boy, if you're the Steelers, you finish undefeated. Only the third time in NFL history. You might have to go on the road for a playoff game. So the Broncos, Steelers, the Browns, the Chiefs, the Bills, and the Colts. So there you go. There's your AFC representation I can't believe Portland lost to the freaking Jets after it was all said and done with us but the Colts we played, the Chiefs so we know what that's all about and in the NFC boy I was wrong, I thought that Saints uh, Falcons, well actually I was right the uh, The Falcons got the win, they made the playoffs, the Saints losing at 9-7 and seven are going to miss the postseason so the Seahawks, your number one seed, Falcons also getting the bye at number two, then you got Detroit, Chicago, San Francisco, and the Giants. By winning their division, they get in. So Tampa Bay misses out at 8-8, eight and eight, and the Saints are going to miss out on the postseason. So the Giants we beat this year, 
as well. But we haven't played many of these NFC teams, so... Um, you know, Seahawks, they've won a Super Bowl before. The Falcons have never won, but they've been. Uh, Detroit, if we're counting our universe, they've been and won. The Bears have won. The 49ers have won a bunch. The Giants have won a bunch. And on the AFC side, you got three Super Bowls. Uh, seven or eight now, if you count the ones McCaffrey won. Never won. Uh, two, if you count the one from Mahomes and then Super Bowl four. And, hey, I was talking to you know, the Chiefs. I said the Chiefs. 11 years, haven't had that Super Bowl run. Here you go. Could be their chance. Uh, the Bills have never won it, but if you're counting back to our Lions career, they beat us for a Super Bowl, so there you go. And the Colts. So uh, let's get through. See if there's any news to look at. We'll get through the wild card week. And then we will be uh, calling it a day for the streaming world here. No big news, so it was the Bengals getting a new stadium. And I think I like I like to simulate week by week, but I think we figured out that we can't uh force home and force away win, so we can't even uh do that. So we'll just have to sim forward and see who we get matched up with in the postseason. Our first playoffs in two years, our first time playing a playoff game. Since we moved to Twitch full time from YouTube, so there you go, bit bit of history here that you guys are gonna get to be a part of. And we have the Colts, so we played the Colts earlier this year. Still doesn't mean it's gonna be an easy game. Let's uh, let's look at try to remember what we did against the Colts, and go even the preseason when we lost the one game that was the three interception game from Tom Brady the third. So. There you go, but uh, the Colts, yeah, it was a close one. I mean, 45-35. And then again, you can see where pretty much from, you know, this game to Miami to the Giants who are in the playoffs to Washington, Philly that we just cheese that we blew out. And then here these last two weeks, we just, we struggled, man. Hate to say it. Um, so let's look here. See what happened last week in the wild card. So the Bills. So once again, Mahomes. He's uh he can't win the big one. Patrick Mahomes loses again, so he's out. Detroit beats San Francisco. Indy beats Cleveland and the Giants. It's a lot of close playoff games. They get beat by the Chicago Bears. So in the divisional round, it's Colts Broncos. It's going to be Bears Seahawks. Bills, Steelers, so you see all the top teams here. And then, of course, the Falcons. I mean, 10 wins. They were a top team, too, but the Falcons and the Lions. So we got the first game, 1 o'clock. Or actually, no, we don't. We got the uh, third game. The two Saturday games were down here. What the heck? So uh, we'll know our fate, I guess, by the time we get into this one. So stay tuned. TV Sports, Twitter, or whether you're a YouTube watch, you like after the fact, but... Playoffs coming soon. Playoffs. Hopefully we can make a run at it. Three wins away from a Super Bowl championship in Denver. Stay tuned. Colts-Broncos divisional playoffs. We'll see you guys next time.